welcome back to Meet the Makers Podcast. I'm your host, Jack Blanche, and right to the left of me is Riger Brandt. Hello. You're doing it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, this was a really fun episode. This is one that we were like, we have to get him on. And this was the episode that we shot with Tubby Toms. So much fun. I mean, do, do you want to... <laughs> Do you want to explain what we did here? Yeah, so Jack had a great idea. At Free the Podcast, we do gradually hotter sauces. So we started off with quite a mild one, which is a Money Shop, which is Mango and Black Sesame. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we moved on to... Oh, goodness, I can't remember. Squealer. There we go. Yeah. 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 And then Scorpion Slammer, is that right? Yeah, that's it. And then Gut Rot Last. So, ghost Town and then got, what was uh, it? Yeah, Ghost Town. Yeah, sort of... five sources, didn't yeah. they? Uh, yeah, I mean, they're all... Started off with this delicious range of, of sources, and then as we went on and asked more questions, we each had a spicier and spicier uh, sauce that we tried on tortilla chips. And, yeah, um, you're about to witness the, the results of that, so I hope you guys... We're doing this for you. We're going through all this pain <laughs> for your benefits, not our own. Certainly not our own. Gut rot is evil. I think Tom actually says on the podcast, he was like, I purposely went out to make the most disgusting thing I could make. <laughs> and uh, and yeah, people he were He like, didn't even wince when he ate it. Though. No, he didn't. He didn't. Animal. I, just, I imagine it's like working in that world, you kind of have to, you know, have to develop an iron stomach a little bit. There's a good bit as well where he roasts a gammon. Roast the gammon, yeah, yep. in whatever kind of context you guys want to take that in. <laughs> it was great, great laugh. And also there were some really nice words mentioned at the end about um, his philosophy and, and supporting local businesses. Sure. Obviously at the time of recording this now, we're just about to, or we have gone into our second lockdown. And I think there's, it's now more than ever, it's more important to kind of spread that message about a little bit and and keep that kind of attitude going. Obviously, here at Maiden's Drive, that's what we're all about. Exactly. And, um, yeah, so if you guys fancy uh, supporting any local businesses and uh, picking up a bottle of uh, Tom's Spicy Sauce or his dust uh, on the shelf uh, that I can see there, um, go head over to uh, maidensdrive.co.uk. Again, if you, use the, if you use the discount code FREEBIE at checkout, you'll pick up a free tea towel. Indeed. Yeah. Enjoy this episode, guys. We had a great laugh filming so this much one. Fun. Yeah, hopefully you guys will too. Enjoy. Thank you very much, everyone, for joining us. Today we have the man, the myth, legend, the Tubby Tom. Hey. Number, one. Hey. number one hot sauce. Number one in the world. Sauce. Yeah, in the it's world. been voted that. Yeah, Mars. Uh, Mars. No, not not yet. We're waiting for the results on Mars. Uh, okay, cool. Yeah, wow. but it's it's like everything slowed down with everything that's happened in the world at the moment. So yeah, we're just every we're just waiting for the results. Just gotta be grateful for what you have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How you doing, man? <laughs> really good, thanks, man. We're um, we're pretty lucky because we've been very busy since uh, everything's been kicking off in the world. Um, luckily, we sell online and we have some great uh, stockists that have been open and continued to take our stuff and kept everything going so we've been able to keep making and in fact we've employed two new members of staff um semi-recently although time's gone very quick time's flying this year isn't it it mm-hmm. just goes like everything's just happening and happening and happening mm. and um, i realized the other day like when when we went from 30th of september to october yeah i just suddenly became more tired for whatever reason <laughs> yeah 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 it's freezing now as well it's actually freezing where's summer gone that wasn't fair. <laughs> I don't think it's fair. I, I think I had like a handful of barbecues this year. Uh, we've just been busy. And, and I suppose, uh, you know, at the start of this year, I had my first son. Um, he's Congratulations. A great little egg. His name's Eggy or Evan. Um, <laughs> and yeah, he's just been taking up most of our time. And it's just been, yeah, hilarious. Yeah. So it's just been like a jam-packed year. Dealing with no sleep. Um, making lots of hot sauce and just keeping going, really, and I'm trying to have some fun. Well, is that what's keeping you? Is that is that how you're keeping awake and not getting any sleep? Is just hot sauce? Is Basically, secret? yeah, because the more hot sauce you cook, it kind of like um, burns your eyelids, and then you can't really close your eyes anyway. So you might as well just lie there like doing work. That's what that's what I do anyway. Amazing. Obviously, we know. Uh, a lot about you and who you are but for anyone listening right now who, who's never seen you before yes which would be very hard to not see <laughs> you before like, well, tell us a bit about yourself and okay. how, where you come from how you ended up here basically yeah it's pretty surreal to be honest we're like five years maybe just more 
more than five years into the, the Tubby Tom's journey. And it's so surreal because I'd never really set out to have a business with it. Um, I just wanted to kind of like play around with some sauce and, and did a bit of that. And it kind of, it, the, it progressed from that into like slipping it into a local farm shop. And that was great. Over farm market was great. Mm-hmm. Um, and I used to work there as well. And um, yeah, and then since then, it's just kind of like gone on to become a business. We employ people now. We supply, I don't know, like over 75 shops. We supply food trucks, restaurants. We sell online. I have a website. It's crazy. Um, Yeah, and I love food, as you can probably tell. Um, And it's called Tubby Tom's, you know. Everything we make is super tasty we focus on flavor um trying to tempt everyone that's like trying to shred we're just like come on like give it up come and eat some decent food with us um and yeah yeah just yeah yeah that's me really brilliant just uh, for anyone listening now we've got uh, we're waiting um (laughs) well we've got an angry strummer outside basically he waited for us to start recording and then he was like (laughs) now (laughs) so if if you can hear a slight buzzing that's what that is (laughs) <laughs> but, um, yeah, what um, I want to provoke you into talking about is how you guys actually met and know each other. Yeah, so, yeah, we met in the shop. Yeah, it's um, So Tom was already stocked in the shop when I started. Yeah. So it's like two and a half years ago now that I started. Yeah. So fair play to that Claire. That's very quickly, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, Stroud is an amazing place. It, I've lived in Gloucester pretty much my whole life. I've been to a few other places but mostly been here but growing up I don't know if I ever went to Stroud and um, it's an amazing place you know it's um, interesting the people there are great Um, loads of characters I love Gloucester but I feel like you know Stroud is like a place where people do get our kind of vibe you know and with Made in Stroud people go in there regularly and buy our stuff and it's great to have like an in-town kind of stockist where you have a wide variety of people, a, a huge demographic of people going into the shop and all sort of supporting local businesses and stuff. It's a very cool community. So when we first started supplying uh, Made in Stroud, it was great because you're accessing people that you, but that I probably wouldn't come into contact with day to day. You know, people that I'm actively selling to, I guess, or at the time anyway. Uh, we did do the farmer's market there We've done that for a, a number of years. Um, yeah, well, uh, I remember the first time I you know, came across your brand, we were doing, um, it, we have a, because obviously anyone who's just started watching and this is the first episode you're seeing, Ryan and I are related, and um, we have an annual family holiday down in Cornwall. Yeah. And um, w- there's like 20 of us in one house, obviously it's a bit d- more difficult to do now, but yeah. Um, <laughs> Rye came in and he had like this big old bag and he was really like he was showing it off to me and going look at what I got it's all yeah. all these different sauces and dusts and it's yeah. it's all vegan and because I just turned vegetarian at the time yeah, I thought cool. he was like giving it all yeah. to me <laughs> so I was like Th- thank you yeah <laughs> what a loot yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> and he went I, I, um, actually they're for everyone they're for everyone <laughs> for sharing not just you <laughs> yeah no, but I, man I was like Pablo Diablo was was yeah. the was the one like scrambled eggs with tomato and avocado. Pablo Diablo, Hell yeah, and, oh. brunch style. Yeah, I've still got yeah. like bone sucker back home, gut rot, which I use sparingly. Yeah, <laughs> gut rot's a funny thing. Yeah, wow, it's a disgusting sauce, but people buy it. Um, it's one that we really dread making. Actually, we do it once a year. Um, yeah, well, you know what it's like. It's super hot, and we've made it uh, every consecutive year. So this will be. The third year, because we only started a couple of years ago, so this one's going to be Gut Rot 2020, which we will have a nice taster of. We yeah, made it last so week. Yeah, this, so t- in this um, episode, we're going, to be, um, we're going to be sampling them. And have you, like, purposely organised them yes. into... Oh, no. Yes, <laughs> so this is a nice order. I think I've been kind, actually, because we've got three <laughs> relatively mild sources, two heavy hitters. Um... I can't wait for you guys to try the gut rot though, because I just want to know what you think of the flavour and stuff, really. So this is number three. Oh, for sure, (laughs) sure. The flavour. This is number three. Yeah, so that's gut rot three 2020 edition. And because of 2020 and 2020 sucks, 
we thought let's make this the suckiest one yet. So we've used a, an even more powerful um, chili extract, which is essentially it's called capsaicin, and it, you know it's basically the hot part of chilies, right. and they extract that into a disgusting dark brown kind of gloop. And then you can add that into foods. Or you can rub it on your back. And apparently it's good for like bad back. I don't know. I've heard something about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I think it's a thing. But it's like um, your oranges and your black. Yeah. So this, uh, we'll see what you think. Okay. Brilliant. Are you, yeah. Should we start cracking? Yeah. So the first one is Money Shot. You guys have all of these in the shop. Mm -hmm. um, but Money Shot is, is a really popular one. And it's nice because it's um, one we did as a limited edition, actually. Um, a few years ago um, for East North Chili Festival, which is a great local chili festival that we go to and we love it. Um, and we did it there and it's mango and black sesame hot sauce. It's not spicy, it's um, just really fruity and delicious. You're not getting in on this? <laughs> yeah, I'll get in on it. I mean, I know what it tastes like, but how can you resist? <laughs> so yeah. we originally, it's called Money Shop because with the first batch, I used to put 24 karat gold in it. Um, yeah. Well, it's like still the thing. We still put a little bit of it in it now. Right. I'm just going to eat it. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I'm having a bit early. Sorry. Mm. No. Mm. It's just lovely. It's so tasty. Yeah. It's non-offensive, right? Mm. You could give that to your family. Yeah. I could give that to my boy. He'd like it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so we used to put 24 karat gold gold leaf in there <laughs> and um it was just a really funny kind of luxury thing but then it got picked up really quickly because we supply um harvey nicks it's on like the high street and um they saw it and they were like yeah we're gonna need some of that as well on the next order and i'm like oh, damn this is not gonna be a limited edition we're gonna have to make this now and just turned out that all the other stockists were like yes we'll we'll have it too everyone liked it so much so we, it's now a permanent fixture um, and yeah, it's my favorite thing to have with that is like the falafel wraps at the market. Oh, if we man, ever go yeah. to Stroud Market and we're not actually like working, we the thing is like go straight to the because the queue becomes like insane. <laughs> and um, and yeah, that's my favorite thing to have on top of those falafels is just a nice like mangoey like just zingy sauce to go go yeah. across it. And so that's what it's made for really. But uh, Rob, who works with us. Um, in the kitchen, he makes a very, very good grilled chicken. So it's a money shot, marinated grilled chicken, mango style. And it's just, oh, it's so, so good. And we have it with flatbread, salad. It's a summer thing, really. Um, but yeah, that that's sounds epic. burn favorite. Yeah. Oh, uh, <clears throat> yes. Brilliant. Shall we crack on with the next one? <laughs> yeah, cool. So Pablo, yeah. you guys know Pablo. Yeah, um, it's my boy. So this one we got a Great Taste Award for in 2019, last year. Um, great Taste Awards are funny, aren't they? Because mm. do you find that they do, they um, influence people's buying decisions in the shop? Yeah. Do they? Yeah, definitely. So they go for the ones they think, okay, this guy's got a lot in his range. Let's go for something that... Um, I mean, I, tried and think I have quite a big influence over what they buy as well. Yeah, good. You're a good salesman, that's why. <laughs> you got it. Thanks, man. A lot of squealer and Nuff Love. Yeah. Mm. Big fan of Nuff Love. So I like the Great Taste Awards. I think they're cool. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing cooler than, than having someone review your source. And, and it's so cool. Because they're pretty honest on the reviews as well. So... Um, you know, they, they'll just like say whatever. It's quite expensive to enter as a small producer. So we entered in 2017 was the first time, I think. And we got one for our squealer. Mm -hmm. But I entered in the barbecue sauce and the results that came back said um, that it was too smoky. And I was like, are you like, are you fucking joking? It's like a smoky barbecue sauce. Like, what do you want? Like, <laughs> what? So do, I don't get it. Like, I was just so mad. <laughs> thing is like, the, your sauce is such a personal thing. You make cool. it to your thing. Mm. And uh, so when people say that they really like it, it's like, it really warms your heart. But if someone's like, nah, 
it's not that good. I have to be careful just how much I buy because it will go in like a day and a half. <laughs> Literally, like a whole bottle gone. It's just, you know, I, as much as you're like, yeah, feedback's like good. I enjoy feedback. No, I don't. I only like it when you people positive. say this is it. good. So with, with the uh, awards, we haven't entered any this year because um, the other thing about it is because we hand label everything here we buy the stickers to go on everything and it's and it sounds like not that big of a deal but when you're making so many sources handmade the way we do we hand label everything and it's like oh my god we the so the two we got them for is squealer and pablo and the guys will tell you it's such a poor like putting those stickers on everything single thing and i know you can buy the rights to the um little logo maybe put it on the label but i don't really know where we'd put it um, but it's a funny thing because if you don't enter it, so you don't win an award maybe for a year or something, it's a big thing because of social media. Everyone always says, hey, I won this many awards this year. We got all of these awards. And I always think, fucking hell, you've got so much money to spend. If you've entered like 10 products and, you know, and you're going to buy stickers for that and you're labeling that, like, you guys are crazy. Um, it just stacks up, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does stack yeah. up. But then if you haven't entered... And so you don't post about anything because you haven't won any awards because you haven't entered. But in the back of my mind, I always think, what if people think I have entered this thing and just haven't got anything? <laughs> and then it's like, oh, I really just want people to know I haven't entered this year. Like, well, they I don't know. know. They will but know. we might do it for the year after. Um, that, like I say, when you do win something, it is, it's a great feeling. Yeah. Kind yeah. of worth it. Right, here we Cheers, go. guys. Mm. Oh, I so love it. <laughs> oh, zesty. Mm. Lush. So that's another like family, family kind of friendly one. Mm. Yeah. So we use loads of jalapenos in that. We buy um, coriander, crates of coriander fresh from Bramley's who are based in Strab. They're great. Bramley's. Really cool. Um, they're great because they, all of my suppliers know me because we've been buying from the same suppliers for a number of years and they do well to put up with me because <laughs> I'm friends with a lot of them on Facebook. So if I need something, I'm less likely to just email. I'll just drop them a messenger Sounds message. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. It's just how you do it, isn't it? And I'll just be like, oh, by the way, I need like 10 crates of this for tomorrow, thanks. <laughs> and it's like nine o'clock in the morning. But whatever happens, the Bramley's always get it to me. Um, yeah. and so they're great for stuff like that we, we use the coriander and when we have coriander days it's a ball ache because coriander gets everywhere <laughs> you have to wash it you have to we uh, chop it up fine and then we put it in and then this, as, it, as we blend the sauce down it kind of goes into it mm. as you can see in the sauce but just every piece of surface in the kitchen just gets covered in little flecks of green and no matter how many times you spray and wipe everything down you look around and you're like, there's another fucking piece of coriander on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that's a really popular one. That's our bestseller now. Nice. Right, and Squealer was um, the original bestseller, which is what we're going to try next. Still sells very well, Squealer. Yeah. So I had a load of that, like loads on uh, some pad thai the other day. Yeah, cool. Oh, Hell yeah. It is so good. That's the thing with Squealer. So this was the first hot sauce I made. So... I made barbecue, that was the original, that's how it all started. I mm -hmm. just made like a batch of barbecue sauce because I got given some um, tomatoes from this guy that used to supply over farm, John Dutton, legend. Um, and he Shut used to up. sell stuff on um, that he grew and he had some stuff. So I took some of that, had some chilies, had some peppers and stuff and I made um, some barbecue sauce. And that's how I, that's the story really is that it went into the shop, I made this barbecue sauce. And then people started buying it for some reason and then they wanted to rebuy it and then it became a thing. It was all very surprising to me. Um, but it, again, like a bit like with the awards, every time someone buys like a bottle of sauce that you've made, that you've, you've, it's just, it's so crazy. And especially when people tag you in pictures of, of like their hot sauce stashes at home mm. and you're like, it's funny because like that's something that we've made like and that's in your house and you're using it and it's awesome. Mm. But it's also funny because my face is on it and so like <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. pictures of like just like walls of like my face like or the character of my face in like in people's cupboards. So I think it's just 
it's just funny. I was gonna. It's that was what I was weird. gonna ask you about. Is like it's hard not to take you know when when you win yeah. an award or people you know it's hard not to take it personally when your face is actually on the product. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was kind of like a tongue in cheek joke thing to put like my face on it because when I first did the labels, I used to draw. I always like art and stuff. I like being creative. And so I do like the designs and stuff for these labels and do it all. I love the right labels, in-house. by the way. Thanks, man. I just, yeah, just read them, it's, read them on the shelf. Yeah. So we, I also write all the st- stupid stuff that goes on the side, and and we sometimes get into trouble with it because I put stupid stuff on the side and, and whatever. Um, but I just like to push the boundaries, really. And um, but the first labels, I used to just draw like a a chicken. It was like a chicken that was like screaming with like fire coming out of his mouth. And it was called like Teddy Tossy. But I used to hand draw every label. I'd sit there with like a a sheet of um, labels that you would put in the printer. And I would literally just like do each one exactly the same. Uh, Barbecue sauce, barbecue sauce with this like chicken and then all the ingredients and stuff. And then I realized I could probably just scan that in. And then I started doing it that way. But for the first ones, and people have pictures of them still. Um, yeah, I used to just do it in my hand. And so, <laughs> long story short, I guess, this is the first hot sauce I made. So I got some Scotch bonnets, because uh, we have a great place in Gloucester called Barton Street. You can get so much stuff down that place. Uh, there's loads of independent grocers there. Yeah, and they I know, yeah. Awesome stuff. And so I used to park the car up and literally go from mini supermarket to the next one, to the corner shop, to the grocers, to all this guy. And I just pick up whatever chilies they had. And a lot of the time it would be Scotch bonnets, but sometimes they would be just green random chilies that kind of looked like Scotch bonnets. And I just used to go with it because I wasn't really selling it as like a business. I was just like making batch by batch. <coughs> and it was a really cool thing because they have such amazing spices in these places just everything's better it's just way better than if you were just gonna like buy it from like mm. wherever and um import it from some, yeah somewhere yeah. somehow but... yeah and it's great because you get to support like local businesses trying to do stuff and i think people forget that that you know um a lot of these like small grocers and stuff they're all independent businesses they need supporting mm. um and they're great and they were always hilarious with me because you know sometimes you like turn up and you just like you just get like a load of abuse because you're just like trying to be like well give me all these chilies and stuff and they're just like oh, okay like are you sure you know what you're doing type <laughs> thing like they're really oh and then, and then sometimes they're just like yeah great do you want some more we've got some in the back and it was just it was just a really fun time um and so that's what the squealer was because at the time I thought that was really hot and it's scotch bonnet which is pretty hot mm. um but as you guys will find out um i know you've tried it before but um yeah, yeah. we're now crossing the the sp- spice threshold yeah so we're half, to. we're halfway through so um you guys grab a chip and i'll pour it out for you so this is almost like a hot ketchup actually looking back at it now yeah yeah because it thanks because it's um it's tomato based and the, ooh, you got a lot loads of garlic um smoked paprika so we get a really nice smoked paprika now so the cool thing about expanding as the business has gone on means that we can actually get access to really good quality spices that we couldn't before even though i used to like getting them from the independent grocers it was great actually we just need so much when we buy smoked paprika in 25 kilo bags and we get unheat treated stuff which sounds really nerdy and boring but Mm -hmm. essentially the dry spices get heat treated and it makes them last a lot longer. But what it does is it ruins the color and dulls the flavor. So we buy um, these sacks of pro- uh, smoked paprika. It's bright red, like literally it's so red. And um, the smell, the aroma is amazing. It's not sweet. It's like almost bitter from the smoke. Um, and it's just great. And that's what we use in this. Um, amazing. Let's see what you think. Here we go. Mm. <coughs> that caught back in my throat. <laughs> oh, yeah. <coughs> oh, dear. No, that was so, lovely. Yeah. Thanks. That's so, beautiful. That's like the... If if I didn't want to impress anybody at a dinner t- table, like, that would be, like, my... Yeah. I'm, I'm enjoying <laughs> yeah. myself kind of level. Because it's like you can feel it in the mouth, maybe on your tongue where you put it. Yeah. It's just, like, kind of, like, pinching a bit. But... Yeah, I can. You could, you get it's a nice warmth, isn't it? Yeah. You could eat loads of that and be fine. 
Um, mm. But I think it's because we balance it out. So much tomato, so much garlic, so much tasty spices. <clears throat> um, but yeah, that used to be our like, are you okay? Are you, yeah, 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 okay, yeah, yeah. Hit the back of my brain. Okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> With the caress. Oh, you got two more to go, right? Yeah, right. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, well, as I said, I had a lot of that on the pad thai the other day, and that was so mm. good. So we eat a lot. I'm not vegan, I'm not vegetarian, or anything. Um, but we eat a lot of uh, meat alternatives at home because. Uh, I'm lazy. I don't, <laughs> I don't really like buying meat that much because unless we're doing like a big barbecue, we're doing a smoke out, mm. which is great fun. I'll go and get some uh, beef ribs. There's a great place called Jesse Smith. We buy um, really good meat from. And they do beef ribs, a Gloucester sausage company down here. Every farm. There's too many to shout out. Uh, what should I tell you? Everyone basically. Um, but we buy beef ribs. We buy pork ribs. I do really good smoked pork ribs with um, Dr. Pepper barbecue sauce. You smoke the ribs and then you wrap them with like a barbecue-y, like Dr. Pepper base. And then um, just, yeah, cook them on a really high heat. By the time you pull them out, the bones just come out and it shreds. Oh, it's wow. really good. Um, that's how I like my ribs to literally fall apart. But in the barbecue world, like the idea is to have a rib that you can slice and you can have like eat it like a thing. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, it's an annoying thing. But if I'm just at home, <laughs> I really like, uh, we call it like fake bacon. So... We buy, it's called like this. This isn't bacon. You can get it in the supermarket now, but you used to just be able to get it in Holland and Barrett and online and stuff. And um, it's legit. I mean, it doesn't taste like bacon. It, the texture's not like bacon at all. But when you're having like um, a cooked breakfast, we love smashing like avocados and stuff, poached eggs and things like that. Uh, it's the little changes that you can make. We always buy like organic free range eggs. We always try and source stuff locally and ethically where we can. And this uh, vegan bacon, although it's it's not local at all, and it is processed, it's a really easy way to swap out something that is meat meat based. And every time I post about that kind of thing on Instagram, <laughs> I get so much hate because really? I think people are just insecure because it's <laughs> meat, welcome meat to a vegetarian being vegetarian. On yeah. Instagram. <laughs> so I used to be vegetarian for a, for a, a long time, many years, and I was vegan for for a year as well when I was eighteen, and um, even dabbled with some animal rights stuff, which was. Really cool. That's for another podcast, really. Um, and I'm, I did uh, study animal welfare at university as well. Um, but I'm just a massive hypocrite and I'm a fat greedy pig. So I like, <laughs> I like So I do, there's no, like, I, I can't be asked to get into that world, really. Because yeah. no matter what you're doing, you're always doing something wrong. And it's, yeah, 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 it's yeah, your fault. And it's like, I just oh, think yeah. the thing is you don't have to classify yourself all the time. Yeah. Like, don't. unless it, it, it's your choice to do so. But yeah. people are always like, so are you vegan or not? I'm like, why the fuck does it matter to you? Like, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. affect what you do. And if, but if they don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, That's exactly. Terrible. And also, do you know what? It's sometimes it's fun to try new stuff. So this vegan bacon, the, it, just those two words together makes people like blood it boil, doesn't it? It's like <laughs> gammon alert. They're just like, <laughs> no, no, it can't happen. You can't call it a sausage if it's not a sausage or something like that. But Richmond vegan sausages, have you tried those? Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah, are legit. So yeah, they're good. Mm. The thing is, Richmond sausages are so shit. Yeah. That you might as well get vegan Richmond sausages because they taste the same. And they probably got the same amount of meat content in them anyway. <laughs> but every time, every time we post about stuff like this, I just get hate because people, because uh, I love my butcher friends and we buy meat and we cook it really well. And, yeah. you know, but we buy good quality stuff. And yeah. I think it's really important to make those little decisions don't just buy shit meat from iceland like you see people buy like cases of just like oh. frozen chicken pieces and you're just like you're you're going to die yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah like is it worth it like we is buy even chicken we buy stacks of so i always kind of think like whoever has like plain chicken anyway do you know what i mean like my brother did when he was like being a weirdo and he was like being a personal trainer he used to have boiled chicken i used to think you were fucking wrong and but i no one ever like has plain chicken i with meat, you always flavour it. Unless you're having like a steak or something. And even that, I put black coffee rub on it, which is... Oh, a v well, you guys that. probably oh. haven't eaten that. But, no, no. So um, I go cowabunga, salt and pepper. Every oh, time. yeah. Cowabunga is the original. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we, so with cowabunga, we usually smash that over the short ribs and briskets and everything like that. And with black coffee, it's a, it's a real like Marmite moment because 
I love, I have my coffee black. I have tea black because I like, <laughs> you know, when we, we've done veganuary a few times and one of the easy things to cut out is milk. And, um, and so you get used to it. It's the same with Coke, like, not like Coke, but as in like Diet Coke and stuff. Because the more you just like stick to that thing, you forget really what milk in tea tasted like. And mm. then that becomes your new normal. And so with tea, I love just the like straight tea because it's so clean on the mouth. And when I wake up in the morning, I need something like light. I don't want like creamy stuff. Um, and coffee, black coffee is just the oh. best like buzz. Yeah. And, I, and when I used to, I used to smoke a lot. So it's so much better just to have like a coffee now, whereas I would always start my day smoking and then have like a, a coffee and then like carry on. Mm. Whereas now it's just like, okay, coffee's just black coffee is fine. We, we rich, recently had um, ritual coffee on the podcast. Yeah, okay. Cameron, I Courtney. love, yeah, those They're guys. So, are cool, aren't they? <laughs> so we buy their coffee for that coffee rub. Mm-hmm. There you go. We got stacks of their coffee bags. Can you see them? Yes. Right, right, oh, that. brilliant. Oh, yeah. We cool. use their stuff. And the great thing is, is we buy them in the big bags because we do use it in the coffee, but we also go through fucking loads of it at home as well. <laughs> nice. So we just like, if it, well, actually I say that we used to go through it more. Now it's more like, uh, just like get something in the cup and down it and go. But when we have the time using the proper like cafetiere, it's the only way to go. Yeah. It's the best coffee I've tried. Absolutely. It's so good. 100%. Uh, and it does wonders with the rub because black coffee, or it's like an espresso blend that we use from them that they roast. It's an, it, absolutely amazing, as you guys know. You mix that with brown sugars. We toast cumin seeds. We do all these things. And we mix them together and that it wakes up the flavor of beef because sometimes I think people just like, f- like they romanticize the flavor of beef because I think actually... It doesn't taste like that much unless you've charred it on the outside mm. or unless if you slow cook it, it just doesn't taste like that much, does it? Salty mm. thing. Yeah, like, and people are probably going to go nuts about this because they're like, <laughs> I don't think it does. But like when you have like a rare steak and like I have these things, we try these things. I had a Wagyu steak not that long ago, mm. which we didn't bastardize. We just, we had it plain on the grill and um, it was fine. It's okay, like, and the texture was amazing. The fat melts, it's really great mouthfeel, but the flavor is like, need it needs something. Yeah. I think, you know, and with having like black coffee and stuff, it means that you don't necessarily have to put it on meat. It's, it tastes great on meat, it's made for meat, but it doesn't have to be. And that's why we use a lot of fake chicken stuff at home. Um, it's the same as the fake bacon. I hard fry it, and then we toss it in the spices, in the pan, really nice and hot with some oil and then um, finish it off with a bit of sauce to glaze. And you can make so many different things. You can make chicken tacos, you can do, you can use our dragon salt, you can fry off with our smoked rapeseed oil, fry off um, fake chicken pieces, sprinkle in your dragon salt, finish with tabiaki and have it on fried rice. It's so wow, good. And goodness. on the same lines as tofu, we buy loads of smoked tofu. Every time I post tofu on, everyone's just like, Fucking tofu! Like, why are you eating tofu? It's so uh, tasty, though. It's so good. Yeah. It's and the thing is, it's not about necessarily not eating meat. It's just like eating stuff that is actually does taste good. Yeah. Like I could give, I'd given it to the two guys. They wouldn't normally cook um, tofu or have it at home, and every time I bring it in for them to try, they love it. Don't you? They can't hear you. <laughs> You Anyone listening, um, <laughs> mm. uh, is it Fraser, was it? Yeah, Fraser. Yeah, Fraser's, um, one of uh, Tom's staff is behind us at the moment. Oh. In the middle of... <laughs> <laughs> you right there? You saying that you uh, enjoyed the tofu? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoked tofu's good. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now shut the door. <laughs> Get back to work. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Fraser. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Everyone's going to unfollow me after this. No, they will. <laughs> yeah, they will, yeah, because I'm going to start going on that loads of stuff. Matter. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Right. I, I kind of love it when people unfollow me, to be honest. It's like, well, I do. Yeah. I like it when they message me and tell me that they're unfollowing me. I've so never I think, had that. I think, cool. <laughs> 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 Good. <laughs> Bye-bye. There's just one less person I have to worry about now. Yeah. Right. So, so yeah, at home, I, I mean, I get for a lot of dragon salt. Rachel's cool. a massive fan. Hell yeah. Uh, what kind of stuff do you guys cook with it? All sorts, everything. Yeah. She literally puts it in almost everything. That's the funny thing with Dragon Salt is that um, we made it because I love Chinese takeaway. And there's something specific that I always go for, which is like uh, 
like a smoked chili chicken or like mm, sometimes right, it's called yeah. salt and pepper. And I remember when someone told me about it and they were like, oh yeah, yeah, we get chips from the Chinese. I'm like, what, what? are you on about? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, you've got to try it. It's salt and pepper chips. I was okay. like, yes. yeah, I got, yes. salt, I got salt and pepper at home. I can just do that. Like, what, why no. would I like buy that? Yeah, and I got it and I was like, whoa, this is basically yeah. just like crack. And, uh, <laughs> it's just like in your face, like MSG yeah flavoring and it's exactly what you crave when you think about chinese it makes me salivate like pretty much 23 hours of the day uh, yeah, thinking about the, msg yeah i got the shakes from it as well. <laughs> yeah when um it was me and my buddy we were up in liverpool at the time and, cool. and they are big on their salt and pepper chips up there cool yeah, yeah. i met up with some people who were like you never had, oh, i'm not even going to try the accent yeah, <laughs> yeah better not yeah um, we've already upset enough people <laughs> yeah. um, but they were like um you've never had salt and pepper chips and we yeah. thought yeah we just scrape a little bit of salt and a bit of pepper on them no no yeah. no you haven't and so we're going to take you out we're going to get you really pissed yeah and then as we get in the taxi, we're going to get some salt and pepper chips. And it was Perfect. the best, man. It was so I lush. love it. I think it's like, you know, and everyone seems to know what it is now. Whereas I had no clue what it was. And I love cooking stuff at home, as everyone does. But it's that secret ingredient to, to making proper egg fried rice, you know. Yeah. And, and if you don't make it that way, then kind of like, what's the point of you even trying to emulate something, you know? You're just like bastardizing something. And and I guess in a way we're doing that by making our own mixes and they're kind of like, you know, um, homages to to other, you know, things. And, and I can't claim anything that, that we make. Everyone makes hot sauces, you know, everyone makes seasonings. But the funny thing with um, drag, <laughs> the funny thing with dragon salt is it's called a Chinese salt and pepper style seasoning. At the start of the whole coronavirus um, pandemic, it w just before it was our best-selling product. Right. Um, even beat Pablo. Really? People were going nuts for it. As soon as the Chinese virus came around, our sales dropped. Oh, no one was weird. buying dragon salt, and I was like, "Are you serious? Like, that's really. Are you sketchy. thinking you're going to get coronavirus from Chinese-style seasoning?" Wow. And then you hear like. Uh, and then people aren't buying Chinese takeaway and stuff. Oh, and it's like, what? are you guys like serious? What is this country like? Are you guys crazy? And um, yeah, it's a thing that divides people still, I think, MSG. And we have people talking about it. We're very nerdy about spices and ingredients and stuff. And we use like high quality everything. We'd never scrimp on stuff. We've done our research on MSG and it's, um, it's totally fine. Like for your body, it's, it's essentially a salt sodium yeah. glutamate you know it's it's tasty and it's used in actually most of the world and in fact in this country and a lot of foods it's it's in there but when people you hear pick things up probably on like shit daytime tv and stuff or yeah. like what your nan yeah, said like 10 years ago and well. they're like oh yeah they always use so much or like whoever they is like using uh, msg and stuff makes you really thirsty now the thing is when you have chinese takeaway your portion size is huge. You never have like your normal portion size when you go to the Chinese dude. You always just like, it's not just having like a tea tied like thing in front of the TV. It's like platters of stuff. Yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. like all fried, is, like everything, yeah, yeah. everything tastes good. But like, just imagine when you have like a pizza, like a takeaway pizza, not Fat Tony's because Fat Tony's are pretty clean, but like anything like a Domino's <laughs> or something like this, um, you eat it and you're really thirsty that night, every, pretty much with any fast food. And it's just the level of salt. It's the amount of food you're eating. If you had a Domino's pizza and you had two slices, which is your probably recommended like portion size for it. Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who does that? But you know what I'm saying? You wouldn't wake up thirsty in the night. Mm -hmm. But it, with the Chinese food, there's a big, just like annoying, like passive aggressive kind of semi racist thing where it's just like, oh, it's so annoying, man. Mm. And it's like people that chat like they know anything about nutrition and food. I mean, look at me. I know everything about nutrition. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm just saying that it's just as bad for you as salt is. Yeah. And you wouldn't sit and eat like a, a whole tub of salt you wouldn't do the same with MSG. You have to respect the ingredient. And that's what we do with our spice mix. Um, and it's just a delicious thing. And it wakes up flavors. And I was talking to you about it earlier, wasn't I? Mm -hmm. um, and on its own, doesn't really taste like that much. But when you pair it with specific flavors and specific ingredients, so garlic in MSG is, is an amazing mm. um, flavor combination. 
We also use it with, well, in the dragon salt, we pair it with the garlic, we've got ginger, we use a yeast extract in our garlic and herb, which is an amazing ingredient. Um, and you mix those two things. Both of them essentially are flavor enhancers, both pretty natural, yeah. but they are just delicious. And that's kind of like, yeah, one of the things we're trying to do with, with things. I remember we went to a market once and someone picked up the taster of dragon salt. This is before uh, COVID and stuff. And so they were having a look and like said it was delicious. He called his wife over and he was like, wow, you have to try this. It tastes just like the Chinese takeaway, about like, all this stuff. And then like he looked at the back and he was like, yeah, it's, it's got MSG. And oh. I was like, what the oh. fuck is wrong with you? Like, what? I just, you've got to bite your tongue so much. I don't, but I should bite my tongue a lot with the markets because I just think people chat so much shit about stuff and they're so rude. I would just like, I would never do that. Like, if I went to a store, you know, there's a funny etiquette with market stalls and and uh, people are really funny. It's like the British way of being awkward because you really, you just want to try it, but you don't really want to be pressured into buying anything. No. And I totally get that because I'm awkward. I don't really want to be pressured into stuff, but I can easily handle the situation because I'm not an idiot. Like I would just go up, you can taste something. And if it's not to your taste, you know, say, thanks. So yeah, thanks for that. And not for me. And you go, but people are so funny about stuff and they're so rude. And I think sometimes farmers markets could be like a platform for people to like wax lyrical about stuff. I remember actually Stroud. So Stroud is actually what, wasn't it voted one of the best farmers markets in, in the country? Yeah. Yeah. And it's, it was like one of the first ones as well. We've met so many friends through attending this market. Friends are all the other market stalls, which we're really missing at the moment because we haven't been for quite mm. a few months now. Um, and also all of our customers, we've met so many great people at Stroud. And all our other markets, but Stroud is like a particularly nice one for us. We go and we basically spend the whole time talking to everyone and, <laughs> and eating food and spending all the money we make at the market ends up just like, do you know what I mean? We just have really good fun and it's such a great market to go to. But there was this one time where this oh, guy was just like going on about like every single thing. He had no intention of buying anything. He was just like... Just a massive nerd, but with, I don't know, it was just really annoying. It was just like going through everything. And um, where do you source this from? And I'm like, yeah, we buy it from wherever, like whatever. And, even, and what about this? And then we go through it and he's just like, oh, yes, that's not very good, is it? Yes, I won't eat anything with salt and sugar. And then like walk off. But he said it's so loud that like everyone could hear. And you just want to like petrol bomb in like on the way out. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> Well, so, Get out of the market. <laughs> I mean, if you took a lighter to any of these bottles, maybe that would actually, yes, actually work. Yes, I should have done that. I should have done that. Um, Molotov hot sauce. Yes. <laughs> yes, because it's good to get rid of... Uh, Get, get rid of annoying people but the, thankfully the, the majority of people that go to the markets are amazing we have some fantastic market stories we'll probably have to be on the next podcast because it's yeah. uh, a lot but um, it's good fun and yeah. we, we really really miss it at the moment yeah. we don't get that we actually don't get that many people complaining about the price anymore no, in not, fact, not we, products, like no, but they did. Or... They did though at the start in the on the markets because people used to say, "You do realise I can get like Tabasco for a quid in Tesco's or like Frank's on, hot then. sauce." It's like, <laughs> well, fucking get it. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Stop wasting my time. Yeah, right. Like, you, the, the, I'm offering something completely different. It's like it's like trying to compare like two completely different things do you know what i mean yeah i'm yeah, trying yeah. to think it like off the top of my head of two different value things of the same thing so like but, ice and bacon and then bacon from the farmer's market yeah exactly yeah. that's not the same product yeah, yeah, yeah you know you go and buy something that's gonna be tasty you're supporting local business um you know it's all around it's better mm. it's a completely different product than if you were going to go and buy frozen bacon mm -hmm. i just think what's the point of using ingredients that are like that the mm. poor quality ingredients what's it adding what's it actually adding to your dish yeah you know it's not going to bring loads of flavor um and i think that's the point with the sauces and stuff it's like you can use basic ingredients to make something really delicious and add sauces that have been made using really high quality ingredients, really good like flavor matching with whatever you're cooking. And you can transform these things. You don't need to pile loads and loads of different ingredients in something to make it tasty. Right. Um, should we try this? Yeah, okay. let's do it. So we've got goat Cheers, down, guys. Yeah. Clink. Clink. Oh, that's a lot. I thought, uh, I should have put more on. 
It wasn't really enough. No, you can still get all yeah, that's hot. Mm. Ghost chili. No right. good That's so tasty though. It back you know So that's a real sauce. Yeah. <laughs> so that's a super hot one. Well it's we call it super hot. It's um ghost chili, loads of garlic, tomatoes, plum tomatoes. Really, really nice. But we um uh, in a land before time, um the chilies that we use in this, ghost chilies, Naga Jalokia, were voted one of the world's hottest chili, if not the hottest. Three, aren't they? Yeah, they're really rare. Yeah, they are up there still, but they're you know, however many years ago people would say that that was the hottest chili. And that was the one that everyone would be like, oh, have you heard of this like Naga Jalokia? And um now it's just just something that people eat all the time. Everyone knows about ghost chilies now. It's very American way of calling it as ghost chili, but I'm starting to get in trouble now. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 that one is. Do hot. you know I'm rubbish with spices as well? I'm actually really well. I shouldn't say with spices. I should say with heat, because your tolerance must have built. Oh yeah, because definitely. You, you didn't even flinch. When you yeah, were I've eaten it. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. It's. Do you know what really fucks me up? Is trying other people's sauces. Mm. Oh. So there's always this like bravado thing. And people come, when they come to the market and they want to, they're like, come on then, what's the hottest one you've got? I usually eat a far curry, like, what's the hot? what you got then? And then we'll give them like gut rot or something that literally just like <coughs> scolds your mouth off. And they're like, nah, can't taste any heat, but you can see their like eyes going bloodshot. And they're sweating. Yeah, yeah, and they look like just super gammony and pink and just like getting pinker <laughs> and, and uh, it's always the same kind of guy. And, uh, <laughs> it's the same guy every It's time. actually the same guy, yeah. I like a vindaloo with extra chilies. Yeah, <laughs> and they all have the same political view as well. And then, so when I... Um, <laughs> well, yeah. um, oh. Please don't unfollow me. <laughs> um, Un- unfollow me. <laughs> Uh, I, there is an expectation though it's like an unwritten rule isn't it because I make hot sauce people always just want to fuck with me so I go to other people's stores and they're like oh yeah you, you'll like those ones but I, you'll really like these ones at this end and like, I'm like yeah pro- probably fine I'll try them. them oh my god and then the amount of times I've had to just like pretend that nothing's like affecting me but inside like my guts are just like on fire and like macerating I'm just like oh my god but you can't <laughs> let your like guard down and I there is a really disgusting sauce called the bomb yeah which is yeah, on yeah. hot ones um and every time I went to like someone's house party, this is only in like the last five, six years because we've only been doing sauces for that long. But um, yeah, we, and we would try this sauce. People always get me to try whatever sauces they've got in their, yeah. um, their thing, their cupboard. And that one really, really messed me up. It's so, so hot. Um, just made me feel just sick. It's one that is just unrelated. And it's like unrelated metallic, heat. isn't it? It's very metallic, no flavor. And, um, it's a really shit sauce, but um, <laughs> but people love it, and you buy it for the heat, and I think that's kind of what we wanted to go for with gut rot, but I can't do that. I have to add stuff. So gut rot's got loads of garlic in it. This one's a really tasty one. We use uh, nice red peppers in there as well, mm. mellows it a little bit. It kind of seems like not the right thing to add to a hot sauce, but a well, really hot sauce, but we really wanted to just balance out so it's got flavor, and it's just gonna like fuck you up as well. Um, <laughs> I remember coming down to the market before work one morning. Yeah. And you were like, oh, try this scorpion. I was like, oh, is it hot? And you're like, no, no, don't worry about it. It's nothing. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. And I think Louie might have been with me. Yeah. And Rach, maybe. And I had it, and I was like, trying to keep it cool. Yeah. His hair, like, sweating. (laughs) Yeah. How are you, Ryan? I'm like, yeah, I'm fine. (laughs) Mate, it's... it's, It was, like, pissing down with rain as well. So one thing that my nan does, so my nan's great. Or my gran, I should say. She comes down to the market sometimes. Well, she used to when when we uh, started off, and she's they've always come down to come and say hello. They love farmers markets, and they're the perfect farmers market customers because they love to learn about what you're selling. They love to learn about the product, and they want to taste it, and they will probably buy it. They'll probably buy one thing that they really like from your store. So if you ever see my grandparents, make sure you um, get them over. But they're also really funny. So my gran um, pretends that she doesn't know me. So she'll turn oh, up and hero. there'll be loads of people on the store and she does this, she's, she's done it a few times and it's so funny. She um, will start getting tasters and like she'll look around and she'll be like, yeah, yeah. 
That's really good. That's really good. I love that one. And then she'll like taste the next one. And then she, it's getting hotter. You can see it's visibly like on her face, it's getting hotter. And the reason I say it's because of the scorpion, because then she just goes straight for the scorpion. She, but she's not really no, looking at what she's doing. She's just like dunking it. It's all like overacted, basically. She's like a secret thespian. She's just like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yum. Wow, this is really nice, guys. Wow. And then she like ate, ate this scorpion one. And just, all of a sudden, like her face just went bright red. <laughs> and she's just like still trying to stay in character. <laughs> and she's just like, oh, um, I'll be back in a minute with some money or something. <laughs> and then like, I think Strawberry were behind or like in front of us. And I just saw her like running over to Strawberry. And they had like uh, all the little tasters at the front. And so she's just going over there like necking all this stuff. And I'm just like pissing myself because I'm just like, Grant, it's so obvious oh. that like that we're connected here <laughs> you're not fooling anyone that's but, she, but that's how that's why she's such a legend because she's willing to go to those lengths to kind of like help oh, me sell my product yeah, she's sad. really good uh, well done, grandma, so Teddy. funny yeah yeah <laughs> big up grandma um, yeah they're great and um, yeah yeah I miss the markets we all do buddy we all yeah. do yeah so I've spoken about gut rot a little bit already haven't I so I've given you the lowdown yeah, on it we yeah. make it consecutive years this one is, yeah, it's horrible. <laughs> it's, so, it's always horrible. So, uh, so this one is the one that nearly killed my granddad. Really? It, was very it didn't similar. kill him though, did it? No, not yet. Okay, good. No refunds. <laughs> yeah, no, re yeah. no suing, please don't sue me. <laughs> <laughs> no, this Thanks. is the one um, very similar to your, uh, your story with your grandma. Uh, yeah. We had a, we had a, a ma macho blanche um, moment at, yeah. at a birthday party and I had, had a bottle of gut rot. Yeah. And we were only, it was like all the Blanche men like doing a tiny little dip of bread into it and seeing how they get on. And it was like, oh, that was just yeah. like the tiniest thimble amount. And That's you, what you need. And you're off your feet. And then, um, then grandfather comes along and goes, like gets like a spoon, a bit of bread. Like, he's showing you how it's done. Basically. He's showing you how it's done. Scoffs it. And for a good long while, he was like, we, we're all there waiting patiently to see what would happen. Yeah. And he just like, Swallowed it down. We all waited really? the appropriate amount of time yeah. for him to have a reaction, and he like passed through it. And went, yeah, that's how it's done. And we're like, okay. And then we went back into our conversation, <laughs> yeah. and just out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say, was, this must be a machine. No, no. And, and he, was, he started it. coughing, and it, we were all like, we were all holding our breath because we thought, uh oh, this is this is it. <laughs> this is yeah, dangerous. We're gonna have to call somebody. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You'll get along just fine. Yeah, no, he's fine now. Obviously, he's fine. Good. Now, that's good to know. Just brought the heart attack ten years closer. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, maybe it will it will be good for him because I've heard that chilies are very good for all sorts of things. Yeah, and actually. You know, maybe it's like, it's kick-starting like everything. It's like True. saying, okay, yeah, you've been eating Tabasco for way too long. Now it's time to eat the, some real sauce and yeah. it like bumps up everything. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. let's see how you fare oh, then with oh, this. No, no, like, you guys. I am no superhero, I will say. I mean, oh. it smells like hurt. Can I smell it? Uh, yeah, yeah that actually hurts my nostrils, just from one way. I told you, didn't I? What I don't know with, whether it was before we started filming, but um, we use. So the main thing about this is Carolina Reapers. So mm -hmm. they were voted the world's hottest chili. Um, nerds will tell you that it's not now the world's hottest um, chili. X or something. Yeah, Pepper X. But then it, Pepper X has to have been grown consecutively um, and still be a, a, as hot every time. And um, I'm not sure it has. It's it. Depends who you talk to. But mm. I think this is the hottest chili I've ever tried. Um, we also use a 6.4 million Scoville extract in this to bump it up. Six in this one, million. I think we use scorpion. I can't remember. <laughs> we use it. What we do when we cook gut rot is we get, try and get it done as quick as possible because you get delirious. Your like mask just like sweats up. You're, you can't see anything. You can't breathe. And you're coughing for like... I don't know, like a couple of hours afterwards and then everyone thinks that they need to stay away from you. It's like, no, I've just been like cooking like hot sauce and stuff. It's fine. Well, I was going to ask you about that. Do you yeah. have like Scoville unit measurements for each of these? Or Because no. I hear it's like a made up 
sort of yeah, they thing, said, I think it's it? supposed to be bullshit. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I thought it was basically just a whole load of dudes just sat around a table eating chilies and then deciding how much it made their yeah. balls sweat. And, like, <laughs> and if they eat a chili and they don't have a sweat, sweaty gooch afterwards, then it's kind of like mild on the spectrum. Oh, but yeah. I don't know. It's, it, it, it really disappointed me, actually. I thought it was like a More scientific, scientific yeah. thing, yeah. which I, there must be. That can't be how they do it. But yeah. I have heard that, that it's just like a bunch of dudes and it doesn't yeah, sound yeah, very progressive. It, uh, yeah. Um, but well, you're look. saying this has an extract oh, of, oh, oh, oh no. no. You're saying this has, was it 4.6? 6. 6.4 mil. 6.4 mil. That's enough. Oh. I'm already going to be sweating after this. Yeah. Well, I'm already sweating from the ghost town. Gentlemen. Yeah. Cheers. Salut. I got more than you guys. <laughs> Here we go. Easy. That's fine, now. It's a, th it's a really funny oh, one. Oh, sugar, what do you, whoa, what do you swallow? So with Reaper and extracts, they affect your mouth differently. So with Ghost Town and Squealer, you get like an immediate, like sharp <laughs> buzz wherever you put it. With extract, it's one of those things where it just kind of just builds in your mouth and builds in your throat. and over time. This is one of the funniest things about the market because we put gut rot on right like once a year, it's like on for a bit and um, people try it and they're like immediately afterwards they're like, that's fine, that's not too bad. But the uh, the kind of like the reaper and the extract kind of creep in and it just makes your whole tongue go numb, it like makes you feel like you're having a hot flash, you're going through menopause, like it just does all sorts of things to your body. And then the funny, well, I'll tell you, you just really... described what I'm currently going through. Yeah. <laughs> uh, like, I, I, was, I, I took it down and I was like, hang on, this is suspiciously okay. Yeah. Something's going to happen. And, uh, and uh, you, as you were saying those things, it started coming up. It's that weird thing where it. I'm yeah, dribbling everywhere. It just, yeah, Ooh. makes your mouth go. It's kind of like Szechuan and Pepper. You ever had that? Yeah. And it yeah, just yeah. like makes your whole like face go numb. Mm. Yeah. And, um, it's like that, but when we Ooh, have to really taste sweating. test this stuff, it just yeah, like here we go. bounces off your tongue. Oh, we're in it now, boys. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the funniest things about this sauce is we used to do a, um, a competition with um, the stable pizza. So we would do a hot spicy pizza night. And the idea was that if you ate the whole of this pizza with gut rot on it, then oh, you no. would like win a free t-shirt and you don't have to pay for your t-shirt, right, your pizza. Mm. But two people that entered it messaged me afterwards, had a piss in the night and said they were pissing razor blades. They said literally they can feel the burn like going straight through the, you know, <laughs> thing. <laughs> Bobby Dazzler. <laughs> well, I got that to look forward to. Um, but actually, I've never had that problem. It just always hurts my asshole. Like, it's just like red <laughs> raw, like the next morning when you get like a really spicy shit. But. Yeah, they, they said that affected them that way, so you have to keep me updated. Yeah, well, I just like, always find it makes me like a little bit weepy, but yeah, yeah I'm, I'm not emotional, I promise. a lot from my head. Yeah, have you ever, oh, you ever had kidney stones? <laughs> no, but Rob has, who works in. <laughs> he, um, he, yeah, put me off that. He uh, had uh, a I really like that is like That's that. like made of the stuff that those things are made from, so I'll yeah. keep you updated. Yeah, go. <laughs> oh, man. Um, so yeah, that's the prototype for gut rot this year. Um, we made a little tiny batch of it to go with last week. And, so what percentage um, Carolina is it this year? I can't remember. We we kind of work out the recipe and then I put all of those bits through nutritional calculator afterwards, and that's how we find like the percentage of things. Um, but oh, yeah, it's really funny, isn't it? It just keeps I'm like, like going. I'm like just like my, my fight or flight is like kicked in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I find that. So I the other day we don't all well we don't very often eat fresh chilies like as they are because why the fuck would you? We bought in a load of ghost chilies the other day, and we we're doing it for this video. And before we did the video, me Fraser and Rob chopped up a ghost chili and we had a third of it each, and it set our faces on fire, we were yeah. literally melting, which was fun. And then I knew that I would have to eat a whole one later on 
camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I kind of thought, well, it, it was really bad. Like, I, my stomach hurts, but it's not that bad. And then when it came to the cameras being on, I had to eat this ghost chili. It's a lot of pepper to eat. I don't know if yeah. you ever just like bite a pepper. Yeah, it, and it it's, doesn't it doesn't go down pleasant. smooth. You have to chew it a bunch. You have to chew it a bunch, and it's it almost like as soon as it just like sat in my stomach, it just felt like it was like burning. Oh. You know, like it just looked like I don't know, and I couldn't keep my composure on this thing. It was so embarrassing because we make like hot sauce and. And we're supposed to be like really good at this stuff, but even ghost chili, like just on its own, was enough to mess me up. And I was up that night just with like stomach cramps, everything, just from just one ghost chili. And I was like, oh, I don't know, it's nuts. Well, it really affects you. Well, that is an appropriate source for this year, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, we just want to like fuck everyone's year up a little bit more. <laughs> Might as well. Oh, <laughs> oh my like, god, that was brutal. Oh, I feel like I could, you know, I could outrun a cheater if I had to now. Yeah. That's what that's what we want to instill in people. <laughs> Actually, it's not about like ruining it. It's being the best you can be. Yeah, you can outrun a cheater. I could go on that treadmill now and do. Not like, because I want to. It's because I don't want to get eaten. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's our kind of like our lineup for today. What do no. you think of them then? Oh, yeah, that's awesome. that's amazing. Like I said, yeah? I've got um, I got gut rock back home. I think it was last year's. Yeah. Um, I'm always reordering Pablo Diablo. I think yeah, one thing so. that we didn't mention, which is what when we met, was I picked up a bottle of Wu Tang from you. Oh uh, yeah, like, so. Mu Tang, Mu Tang, mustard. Oh, sorry. We switched the W around. When was that? It's a common mistake. We've always yeah, done it, but we've yeah, we've mustard. always. Can we restart that? So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, everyone says it. Yeah. Okay. Because right, it's right, basically Mu Tang. I'll keep it in then. Um, it, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that it's always been that. <laughs> yeah, so I'll keep that in. So cool. if, it, if it's not just me, so that makes me feel a little bit better. But yeah. it's like, um, yeah, I've, I'm always so if it's not Pablo Diablo, if it's not, I've got Squealer as well actually. Yeah, cool. Um, but Wu Tang as well is a great one. Like yeah. um, when we met at the Forest Showcase, just picked up loads of bits here and there. Like got some bread from one of the bakers. Yeah. Picked up your sauces yeah. and um, picked up some fresh tomatoes and like. Made some really nice cheese and tomato toasties. Oh yeah, I remember. In it and yeah, because I that. saw the um, pictures you sent some. Up Man, it's just that like, was a great day because yeah. you came up like running out of nowhere, <laughs> like with your camera and stuff. I was like, I'll be back, <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And then, like you like had like a gift set and everything, and then we got some cool pictures. Oh thing. man, that's yeah, that, that was cool. That's yeah. pretty much how you start. As a uh, as a videographer, you, yeah. that's, how, that's how you, <laughs> you throw network. yourself into it. That's how you network, baby. <laughs> I think it works. It works, man. That was a long time ago. Well, it feels like the world was a different place back then. Yeah, yeah well, it, it feels was. like my stomach's in a different place now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Um, yeah. Mu Tang's the one on like a fried vegan or non vegan breakfast. Yeah. Just yeah, yeah. Loads of that over your sausages and yeah. So we did something really, really cool the other day with Mu Tang. We um, made it was like well it was basically like a mutang base but we mixed it with some smoke and some tomato some buffalo sauce we added in um, and some like barbecue in- ingredients yeah mixed it up put it through vegan mayo and it's the <laughs> weirdest crazy thing so basically there's a thing called like Car- like carolina style like it's like a mustard barbecue mm. so you could put it on brisket then apply a rub you could put it on whatever you want but it's like quite vinegary it's quite mustardy it's sweet it's smoky it's all of these things and it's something that we don't currently do but we mixed it and, and then put it through mayonnaise or vegan mayo, and it makes the most incredible dip and the reason i know it was good was because our friends gert wings they do a carolina uh, dip like a sweet carolina sauce yeah and they make fried chicken and the idea is that you like dip the chicken into the uh, mustard sauce and it's ridiculous it's oh, so good nice um, I want to try that mm, yeah. they're really good in fact they're supposed to be coming down on the 7th of November yeah I um, hope I can be there I really yeah. do that would be I'm good oh. got a lot of work on oh, man, in thank you. Bill at Christmas yeah oh maple There's... mustard maple as well oh yeah. my god oh, so so new one. I wanted to bring that up but I wasn't sure if we were allowed to talk about it yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah 100% exactly. oh, so my. mustard and maple special isn't it mm. it's um it, I, it's weird. It tastes nostalgic to me. It almost tastes like the mixture of maple syrup and mustard together. Yeah, man, I doesn't love that. necessarily taste like those two ingredients. It tastes like a whole new thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, to me, it tastes like 
like a memory of biscuits from when I was a kid. I have no, I'm fucked up. I don't know why it reminds me of that. But we, uh, <laughs> yeah. we actually use other things like uh, salmon and we glaze salmon. It's delicious with that. Um, mm. We've had it with mushrooms as well, like garlicky mushrooms. And you add mustard maple yes. to that yes. on the side of a brunch. It's ridiculous. Obviously for hams, so you can like sprinkle it over, glaze it up and slow cook it. Everything like that is delicious because it just glazes and the sugar content kind of like gives it a really nice kind of coating. Yeah. Um, you guys like that one then? Oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Oddly enough, that's gone full circle because like the very first episode we recorded of this podcast came over to Rise, stayed the night and cool. had dinner and it was like, here. Yeah. <laughs> Try some, trust me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, nice. And it was like he's it, pushing it on you. Well, it was like it was like this is something that you were making and you hadn't actually kind of like released yet, but you gave yeah. him a sample of it and something like that. And yeah, it was like yeah. it's going to be Simpsons fish and chips with mayo, didn't we? That was it. Yeah. That was yeah. it. Simpsons we had mayo with it as well. So yeah, that sounds, yeah. Look, that's a perfect combination. And it was it was just like yeah. So it's it's yeah. We were like we have to get Tom on the podcast. Firm favorite, <laughs> firm firm favorite in our house at the moment. Do you know, I was just thinking about the Mutang thing and um, uh, like the Mutang Wu-Tang and one of the funniest ones that people get wrong on the store is Nuff Love. So hey, they oh, read yeah, it as Muff Love. Love. <laughs> <laughs> And they're like, oh yeah, I have a bottle of Muff Love, please. <laughs> I'm like, sick, yeah, yeah. cool. <laughs> okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> okay, I think now we've decided what this podcast is going to be rated. <laughs> Tom, man, thank you so much yeah, for having thank us. Thank you. Man. Thanks so for like, down. It's great. This was again like we do this with everybody, but it's like we we just have to get Tom in on this one and do yeah. do do an episode because it would be hilarious and uh, we'll feel sick for for the rest of the day. But yeah, uh, you're gonna <laughs> go home and you'll be thinking about me later. You'll be thinking about me when you're sat in the toilet. Yeah. You'll be thinking about me when you're trying to go to sleep. And then you'll even think about me the morning after as well. Yeah. Uh, we aim to try and like hang around a bit. Um, uh, but yeah, no, it was really good fun. And uh, yeah, Honestly, good luck with the podcast. So this is cool. This. Yeah, Cheers, well, 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 yeah. Well, if uh, anyone watching this wants to pick up a bottle, um, bottle of Tubbies, uh, you can find it on the web shop, basically. Yeah, yeah, or in the shop. Or and... come into... Come into the shop on Kendrick Street. You pretty much have everything. Yeah, there, don't you? there isn't now anything we don't have, I don't think. That's but what's the best thing is because people are always like, because I know pretty much what each stockist has, but it's easy with you guys because I can say, well, they pretty much got, because you, you have like Life is Peachy and stuff. Oh, like you had it and had and, it, yeah, yeah. and it's one of those things we did it as a limited but people are like where can I get it where can I get it and I'm like well you could probably try Made in Strad they probably got like some or you probably got have you got gut rot anymore yeah we've still got some yeah, yeah, yeah. so they're like collector's mm-hmm. items now that's eBay gold really you should actually just sell that on eBay because you like triple up that market <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you just like created this little false economy <laughs> well we did, a, we did a release today it was a day of brewery source and yeah. uh, we love those guys. It's a beer that we drink a lot. But the the point is, is that I said on the listing, guys, don't just buy one. Buy like a couple yeah. and chuck them on eBay because there's only going to be a certain amount of them. And yeah, I don't know whether maple, people have actually done that. No. So this is, um, it's basically, I get sweet mandarin, which is delicious, uh, orange and sour lime. Mix them together with orange habanero, which is super fiery. Um, some toasted cumin, some yeast extract, and then most importantly, Dea's uh, Steady Rolling Man, which is like their classic. Um, we have like lots of different Dea beers here as well. Um, and so we made this um, sauce with them and it's like a really nice fruity, citrusy collaboration with like really hoppy, like it's a, it, when you taste it, I'll give you guys a box to go with. So what happens is you first taste it, it tastes like orange. The middle taste is hoppy IPA, like ale kind of like flavor. And then the last thing you get kicked in the ass by orange habanero. It's a real journey. Um, <laughs> and so amazing. people have gone really I look well. Forward, I look so forward to going on that one. I look forward to going on that one. Cool. Yeah. Thank Tom, you so there, much, Tom. Very quickly, is there anything else that you um, you want people to come away from this podcast with, or is there anything else that you want um, to say but quickly before we cut the cameras? Yeah, basically, thanks to everyone for supporting us uh, for the last five, six years. It's been wicked. Big love to the people that made in Stroud uh, and in Stroud in general for supporting us. Um, thank you both for coming down. No, thank and you for having us. We, thank we you speak a lot, all of us, anyway. Um, and yeah, just like make sure you support local businesses. It's, the world is fucked up 
and you need to help people out and you know just do the right thing yeah. and be a good person and yeah and the whole world will become a better place if we all work together and do cool shit and yeah remember what's really important what an amazing message yeah. <laughs> Love it. also buy my stuff yeah. <laughs> it's tubby toms at uh, on instagram <laughs> oh yeah follow me on instagram please don't unfollow me <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the Wait, i'm sick yeah.